Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars lore video. Today we're returning once again to the topic of spaceships. Previously, a few weeks ago, we covered all spaceship weapon types in the Star Wars universe. Today we're going a bit broader and looking at all spaceship types. So basically, we're going to be looking at the way spaceships are typically categorized, explaining the categorization, and talking about some ships you would find in each category. In universe, there is something called the Anaxis War College system, which is one way to classify starships based on their length. That system does have a few limitations, probably the most notable one being that it only deals with military capital ships. So I'm not going to follow it exclusively, but you will probably notice if you're familiar with the system that I've categorized the ships in a very similar fashion. We're going to start by looking at the smallest ship classes, and I will be fairly liberal with what I consider a ship. If it can fly, I'm basically going to call it a spaceship. On that note, let's start, and the first entry into this list is one that really stretches the definition of spaceship because, well, they don't actually operate in space. But I still thought it'd be good to include them just for the sake of completeness. I'm talking about repulsor lift vehicles, and that's kind of a generic term for any vehicle which is powered by a repulsor lift. Repulsor lift vehicles come in two flavors. The first are essentially ground-based. They don't fly more than a couple of meters in the air. Think about speeder bikes or ground-based vehicles like Luke uses in A New Hope. In the real world, these would be things like trucks or trains or cars or motorcycles. However, you also have air-based repulsor lift vehicles. Things like the V-Wing or transports that you see flying around on Coruscant. I'm not going to go into these too deeply because a couple of days ago, I did a list looking at the five most deadly repulsor lift vehicles. So if you want to learn more about that class, check out that video. Just generally though, repulsor lift vehicles come in a variety of sizes. On the small end, you have the STAP, which is the vehicle that you sometimes see battle droids flying around on. On the large side, you have the Conqueror class Dreadnought, which is essentially an atmospheric battleship. One step up from repulsor lift vehicles, you have starships, and I think most people are probably pretty familiar with what a starship is. They come in various classes, from bombers to strike craft, but generally have a few common characteristics. They're relatively fast when compared to larger capital ships, their occupancy is limited to only a few people, and they're relatively small. The most notable starfighter variants are probably bombers like Y-wings or TIE bombers, transports like the U-wings, gunships like the LAT gunship, space superiority fighters like the TIE interceptor or the X-wing, and then shuttles like the Lambda class shuttle, or the various other models that we see ferrying people around. Of course, there are variants on each one of these starfighter types, and many starfighters are kind of a mix between two or three of them. For example, the B-Wing is a heavy bomber, but can also operate in an anti-starfighter capacity. And especially in Star Wars Legends, where there are thousands of starfighter types, you could basically find a ship for any given role. Let's now look at the civilian side. The most common ship type would be transport ships, whether for transporting people or for transporting cargo. I'd say more often we see the latter, and freighter ships play a relatively important role in the Star Wars universe. They also vary greatly in size. On the small end, we've got ships like the Millennium Falcon, which obviously are meant to transport very small loads, they have great speed and can outrun Imperial ships or blockades. Then on the large end, we've got ships like the LH-3210 cargo freighter. These are more like modern day cargo ships. They're so large that the Trade Federation converted them to warships during the Clone Wars. Let's go back to the military side and continue classifying ships based on their size. Most likely the smallest common military ship would be the gunship. The most famous gunship model is the Braha Tok gunship, which you can actually see during the Battle of Endor if you look carefully. Ships like the DP-20 can also fall within this classification. The point of a gunship typically is to protect larger ships against starfighters. As such, these ships are typically very small, very fast, and their weaponry is dedicated to anti-starfighter laser cannons instead of turbo lasers, which would be more useful against larger ships. You wouldn't really see a gunship any larger than, say, 150 meters. Once it gets past that size, it's probably more accurate to classify it as a freighter or a corvette or some other ship. Speaking of, next we have the Corvette. These ships are extremely versatile. They can, like gunships, be used to screen against starfighters, but typically will also have some sort of offensive capabilities. The most famous Corvette is the CR-90, the Rebel Blockade Runner. You also have ships like the Hammerhead or the Carry-On Spike. Again, very small, very fast, and very versatile. Ships like this were very common in the Alliance Navy because they were very common in the Star Wars universe. 
but typically for any serious navy, you will have heavier capital ships. Along with the corvette and the gunship, you also have light frigates and the very rarely used destroyer. These two classes aren't very common, and destroyer in particular can mean a variety of different sized ships, but the point is that all of these classes are basically the small, fast ships present in most navies. Now would probably be a good time to mention uglies. Uglies are any ship which is made of multiple other ships. Typically, they're put together in some way that's, as the name would suggest, not very aesthetically pleasing, and basically a Frankenstein ship. Typically, these would be starfighters like the TIE Wing or the Y TIE, but I see no reason why you couldn't do the same thing with larger ships. These are basically surplus ships, they're very ineffective, and you really don't want to be flying them. We're now entering light slash medium ships, and the most notable category here is probably the frigate. A frigate is a capital ship which, while it would typically still be used to protect larger ships, also has more offensive potential than something like a corvette. It should be noted that frigate is one of those words that Star Wars authors will often attach to the names of ships without really thinking about the classification. For example, a munificent class frigate is probably more properly classified as some sort of cruiser. Probably the best example of a frigate is the Nebulon B. It's around 300 meters long, it has a heavy anti-starfighter capabilities and can transport some starfighters into battle itself, but also packs somewhat of a punch. Other examples would be the smaller Lancer class frigate or the larger MC-30. Moving up now, we have what is probably the broadest category, that of the cruiser. In many sci-fi universes, cruisers are the heaviest ships or at least some of the heaviest ships. The same is true to a degree in the Star Wars universe. While you do have larger ships like Star Destroyers or even Dreadnoughts, those would be exceptionally rare compared to cruisers. The most famous cruiser type is the confusingly named Dreadnought class heavy cruiser. That ship is neither a Dreadnought or really a heavy cruiser, but kind of exemplifies what you should expect in an ordinary cruiser. At 600 meters long, ships like this would have made up the majority of most fleets. They are very well armed with large weapons made to take down other ships. The Anaxis War College system differentiates between cruiser and heavy cruiser based solely on size. I think that that distinction is kind of meaningless, so I don't choose to do the same. In my mind, everything from a munificent class frigate to an acclimator class assault ship to even an immobilizer 418 I would consider a cruiser. There's not really a specific cutoff, you just want to look at a ship designed to take on other capital ships that is medium sized. And unless you're dealing with a serious galactic power like the Empire, this will be the largest ship in most fleets. I think it's important to note that some of these larger capital ships could also be classified as a carrier, which basically means that one of their central roles is to bring starfighters into battle. Similarly, some ships would have also been an interdictor, which means they use gravity well generators to prevent other ships from jumping to light speed. Between the larger ships and cruisers, there are also some ships right in the middle which are hard to classify. An example would be the recusant class light destroyer. It's over a kilometer long, it's quite deadly, but it's not really as powerful as, say, a Venator. Ships like that or a Victory class Star Destroyer are what I would consider to be a heavy cruiser. Next up, we have a classification that's kind of hard to name. The Anaxis War College calls this size ship a Star Destroyer, but that is largely because of its Imperial bias. These ships are basically anything that's larger than a heavy cruiser, but not much larger than, say, an Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer. I'll call the classification a Star Destroyer as well, but keep in mind that not all Star Destroyers will fall within this class, and that there are many other ships other than Star Destroyers which will fall in this class. For example, most Mon Calamari cruisers would be considered within the Star Destroyer class. Larger than that, we have Battle Cruisers. These are the second largest class of ships, but really not very common in the Star Wars universe. These are ships that were not quite big enough or powerful enough to be considered a dreadnought, but were still larger than a typical Star Destroyer. Battle cruisers were most commonly upsized Imperial Star Destroyer variants, for example the Allegiance class battle cruiser or the Praetor Mark II. These ships are typically larger, more well armed, and just generally more deadly than the standard Star Destroyer or Star Destroyer variant. On the New Republic side, we have the Mediator class battle cruiser. However, that might actually be more properly classified as a dreadnought. We can't be sure because the size and the armament has never been specifically laid out. I think ships like the Subjugator class heavy cruiser, which was almost five kilometers long, fits well into the battle cruiser subtype. As does, I think, a Lucre Hulk class battleship, just due to its sheer tonnage. 
The largest starship classification would be the Dreadnought. Anaxes says that this is any ship over 5 kilometers in length, but I would probably bump that up to 10k or at least 7.5k. Anything smaller is probably more properly classified as a battle cruiser. Dreadnoughts would be exceptionally rare and would really serve only as the flagship in important fleets. The most common subtype of Dreadnought was the Super Star Destroyer. This is basically any Imperial Dreadnought with the traditional wedge shape. We have the Bellator, which would be on the low end for a Dreadnought, all the way up to ships like the Asserter or the Executor, or even the Eclipse. We also have the New Republic Star Defender line, including the Viscount class Star Defender, which was a behemoth of a ship. The main category for these vessels was extreme power. A single Dreadnought could typically hold off a fleet on its own. They were also very important logistically, and you could control or dominate an entire planet with a single Dreadnought, and with ease. I would create a further subtype, and that would be the Super Dreadnought line, and this would only go to a few select ships. The Eclipse classes, the Asserter Super Star Destroyer, the Sovereign Super Star Destroyer, and the Viscount. These are basically the dominant super heavy ships, which I see as without equal. So that's it. That's every spaceship type in the Star Wars universe. Keep in mind that I haven't looked at space stations or defense platforms or things like that. Also keep in mind that the classification would depend heavily on the era. So for example during the Old Republic, ships didn't get nearly as big as they did during the Galactic Civil War. So a dreadnought would be a ship that was only a few kilometers long, whereas in the modern era that would be something more like a cruiser. Also in the legacy era of Star Wars Legends, factions returned to using smaller ships. So. The same could be said about that when compared to the Galactic Civil War. Also, I haven't specifically talked about the Yuuzhan Vong, but their ships could typically be made to fit within these classes, although their technology and their unique ship design kind of made that a little bit more difficult. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know what you thought of this video, whether it helped you understand starship classes a bit more, and what you'd like to see me explain next. Anyway, as always guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.